Why do 5,000 people drown every year on Lake Victoria? Why is Lake Maracaibo the most lightning struck place on Earth? In this video, I'll explain the bizarre weather pattern that's behind both of these anomalies. The world's largest tropical lake by area, Lake Victoria supports Africa's largest inland fishery. For the three different countries that share the lake, the fish here are an invaluable protein source. But while the lake is in many ways a life source, it just as rapidly takes life away. In terms of fatalities per square kilometer, Lake Victoria is among the most dangerous stretches of water in the world. Thousands of people disappear below the surface every year. On Lake Maracaibo, nocturnal thunderstorms are so frequent that Caribbean navigators once used the lightning over the lake to estimate their location. This is the most lightning struck place on Earth, with the highest density of lightning strikes per square kilometer of anywhere in the world. These two examples of odd geography can be explained by one phenomenon, but to describe it, I'll first direct your attention to the Amazon. Imagine you're standing at the port of Manaus, where the Rio Negro is nearly three kilometers wide. Just as the sun rises, you see towering rain clouds over the river, but not where you're standing. As the day progresses, more and more thunderstorms pop up over the land, but the sky over the river becomes clear. If you return to this spot every day, you'll see the same thing happen almost every time. During the day, the sky over large tropical rivers like the Amazon tends to remain clear and cloudless, while rain-bearing clouds pop up over the land. Late at night or very early in the morning, the opposite happens. Because of the high heat capacity of water, the land heats up much more quickly during the day, which heats the air above it. This air rises rapidly and is replaced by air over the cooler river. Air from above sinks over the river, creating clear and cloudless conditions. Very late at night and early in the morning, the river is warm relative to the surrounding land, so the reverse occurs. The rain is particularly heavy over the river, however, due to convergence. Because air collides over the river, it rises with more vigor and intensity. If we increase the scale, say, from a river to the Strait of Malacca, we can see those same nocturnal or early morning storms. But over here, the storms are quite a bit more intense. This area is home to the infamous Sumatra Squall, which has been a notable ship sinker since at least the 16th century. Large tropical lakes tend to have the same daily weather pattern with showers or thunderstorms at night or early in the morning. But here, the air converges at a central point rather than a line. The result is a much more intense, more vigorous rising motion and more intense storms as a result. But further strengthening the storms is terrain. In deep tropical or subtropical valleys like the Magdalena in Colombia or the Brahmaputra in India, we often find the same late night to early morning rainfall peak. This is due to the mountain breeze. As the mountain slopes lose heat via radiational cooling at night, they cool the air above them, which then flows down slope. This air causes convergence at the valley floor, forcing air to rise and produce storms. So in short, the circular shape of the water body and the surrounding terrain combine to produce intense surface convergence over Lake Maracaibo and Lake Victoria, fueling intense nocturnal thunderstorms. The storms produce bright flashes over Lake Maracaibo, and they capsize or swamp fishing vessels on Lake Victoria. So why do we find these deadly lakes and bays in the tropics most often? Well, it's not purely about heat. Lake Titicaca is nearly 4,000 meters, over 12,500 feet above sea level, with an average temperature of 13 degrees Celsius, or about 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Yet this lake has consistent nocturnal showers too. The more important factor here is consistency. In the mid-latitudes, the interaction between cold and warm air masses produces large-scale fronts, which interfere with more local phenomena. In the tropics, the daily cycle of local convection is more important. 
And with confining terrain that shelters the lakes from the trade winds, this further reduces outside influence on local circulation patterns. As a result, we see nearly the same weather happen every day. In this case, a late night or early morning storm over water. Thanks for watching. If you find these topics interesting, consider subscribing. There will be many more to come.